Welcome, Little Reem Reems, to Little Reem. Well, I guess not Little Reem anymore, given that we're sitting at a population of 22 people. Yesterday in Little Reem, we traded wine and a fairly sizable portion of my own sanity in order to make a full-on permanent alliance now with Sparta. Something like 16,000, 17,000 gold, along with all the stuff that we had to give them in the first place to become regular old Rimworld allies. And today, we have the honor and privilege of doing it all again. <laughs> <laughs> because once we are allied with both Athens and Sparta, I think Carthage, I think Carthage is done for. So a few things to bring up in retrospect of yesterday's episode. I've just read through all the comments. Uh, first thing to mention, of course, was 5am when I mentioned that, and I shouldn't need any other excuses, but I'm going to go through them anyway. So let's talk about little frostbitten toeless babies. People were saying to me, hey, did you know you can make this thing called a zone and restrict the babies to a specific area? And I'll be honest, I've never heard of this before. It's weird, because I've played Rimworld for 4,000 hours, and I use it pretty much every series, but for some reason, I had no idea the- Of course I tried that! The babies. That's, sorry, let's talk about the babies. The babies don't follow regular Rimworld restrictions and whatnot on account of them being babies. So the, the, the real problem here is that the babies don't go in people beds, except when they're rescued, they get put in people beds. So whenever the babies were limited in here, they were going out to get food. And then because they were limited to this room and these rooms, they were able to just kind of walk around in the courtyard and they would path back and forth, get the frostbite. But whenever they were rescued, they wouldn't be put in the unowned crib. They would be taken to a free human bed or the hospital, at which point they crawl all the way back. Uh, so either I locked the baby in a room, which, to be honest, I'm now thinking might have not been a bad idea. So I'm thinking next time we just lock the baby in a concrete room and put someone in there that can feed it food. Or we take its legs and then we give it legs back when it's old enough to have earned them. That could be a good idea. We actually had this same problem in the Ohm series where even though we assigned a child a bed like a cot for them in their parents' room, whenever they were rescued, that assignment would be cleared and they'd be put in a regular person bed. It was a, it was a real pain in the ass. I'm also not sure which crib we're supposed to be using because we've got two mods that add two cribs. Maybe one works and one doesn't. Which one have we built there? Because we'll just try the other one. This one? Uh, no, that's the same crib. What about this one? I'm so confused. <laughs> okay, this is the crib we haven't got. So I'm going to build Ironwood Baby Crib right there. There you go. The babies also have far too much autonomy, don't they? I wonder if they're reassigning their own beds. I never considered that that could be a problem. Maybe they're saying, hey, this crib's shit and there's a free bedroom with actual furniture in it. Well, either way, they're locked in there now. Just got to remember to feed the damn thing. Also, also, this other baby didn't have that issue. It's just this baby. This baby is an idiot. Well, that has worked swimmingly. <laughs> Where is it parthing to? Have I accidentally marked a baby area, like, all the way down here? We've got a new mystery. I, I would prefer them to lose their toes than to try and figure out why they think that area is baby area. Just because they're wandering? No. No pressure. Rysling is having a heart attack. I've sent Sign Mortar down. I was going to send Nildraith, and then I realized that Nildraith is 99 years old. <laughs> Come on. 8.9% chance. I hate to say it. We might lose Rysling here. It's only painful now, though, not severe. Oh, you've actually done it? We both just walking away like nothing happened, huh? <laughs> it's just old people all the way down. So Remus is 47. Alagabalus is 65. Sigma Draconis is 83. Holy crap. Jandiros is only 33. So Morton 91. Reisling is 84. Nildreth is 99. This is so screwed. Wow. Maybe we should start arranging them based on their age without the, the slaves being mixed up in that. That way, at least we can keep check of... Which character is going to be more useless to do things? I think I'll do that. Does that look like the fucking baby area to you? Sigma and Draconis play peekaboo. Oh my god, are the people like... Are the people picking them up? Are the people doing things with them? And that's taking them out of their safety zone. I mean, I could make them clothes, but it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Because as far as I recall, you have to tan leather. I've queued some baby clothes up, but I have a feeling by the time we actually get them produced, the baby is going to be grown, so... We'll see how it goes. Go go to bed. Piss off. In the prison right now, we have Euremedon and Alkibiades, who is 54. Oh, God. Um, I'll, I'll definitely take you. We could execute Alkibiades. I think I need to focus on age more than skills at this point. 
but you are really shit, aren't you? Wowee. I'm going to start recruiting you because you already are already a legend and you have no resistance. What about you? I don't know that I can recruit 54. 54 when the majority of our people are old and shit. If you are over the age of 54, I'm not saying that you're old and shit. What I'm saying is age is far faster in Rimworld and I would rather not have this person very quickly accelerate to uh, mummification. I will execute her tomorrow. She will be executed. I've decided. Nice. There we go. Well, let's have ourselves an execution to celebrate. Oh, too soon since the last one. Oh, don't you worry. We'll find a way. The second great battle of the Riemann Coliseum. We have Slave 7 chosen completely at random versus our prisoner. Although I'm not entirely sure where the prisoner is right now. Hello? Someone delivering... <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't understand why he doesn't just restrict the babies to his own. <laughs> These babies do what they want. You cannot contain them. Have we seriously got to sit here and wait hours while a baby delivers a prisoner? Oh my god, it's crying. <laughs> god, this is high tier. We start them young here in Reem. They have to get used to the combat and the horrors of the world. And it begins. Oh, the weapon's still too far away. Maybe they can't take weapons off of the shelves. Maybe they have to be on the floor. The problem is the Colosseum doesn't have a roof because it's... Well, it's a Colosseum, isn't it? Shit. I'll put the weapon shelves, I guess, slightly closer next time. See if they actually grab something. Good luck. Maybe if Alcabades beats Slave 7... We enslave Alcabades and we throw Slave 7 into the execution. Whoa, holy crap. That wasn't even a competition. Unbelievable. Your winner. Alcabades. Al 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 we need to rename you. Ah, oh, thank you, baby. Save me the trouble. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, this is just worse and worse. Although the prisoner has very much impressed me, so I might take them on instead then. They, they might have been spared the execution. A group of Greeks from Carthage. They want to tunnel around your defenses. What, all two of them? <laughs> has our colony wealth dropped that much? Uh, no, we're, we're good. Hmm. This is a matter of honor and principle. I'm sending Remus in. How dare they think they can send two people in to try and destroy Reem. Get him, Remus. Get him, Remus. Please don't let me down. I thought this would be an epic moment for you. Oh, he's terrible. Well, he's not terrible. He's got 15 melee and a masterwork weapon. You fool. Oh, you fool. Here we go. He's warmed up now. Yes, there's one down. Oh, right in the humorous. We've got a 12-year-old. Holy crap. <laughs> 12-year-old <laughs> and the other one is 29. They're both pretty young. <sighs> They're not very good, though. We do have to try and strike some sort of balance between... Between people who are young and people who are good. Unless they're young enough to train them up to be good, at which point that's fine. Oh my god, my Heathcliffs. That's so many. How many fucking yaks have we got at this point? 31? <laughs> I will admit, I wasn't expecting it to be nearly that amount. Okay, um... Here's a weird idea. We could sell yaks. We need them for cavalry, but also we've only got 23 people. We could sell them to Athens. What? We can't tend to you because there's... No path. What? You were just able to send the other guy fine, even though there's no path. Oh, there we go. No? Uh, what? Because uh, that's not built? Ah, uh, you're speaking madness. I don't know why you're able to tend the other woman on this one. Okay, I'm going to throw you right there. And then you're going to tend them there. Perfect. Well, I'm certain this won't destroy the game. <laughs> why here? Fuck off. Go and fight elsewhere.
Well, it's a real shame those bloody speech bubbles were in the way because that looked like it could have been an interesting fight. I'm going to draft everybody up and move them down here just to see if we can pick through some of the people that have survived. And I think saving the Spartans would be a real good way just to keep our alliance site. Who was there? These people are Macedonian swordsmen. Numa Pompilius? What, as in Remus's daughter, Numa Pompilius? Where the fuck is she, though? Social tab. Uh, Numa Pompilius. She's right fucking there. Bleeding out in 20 hours? Holy shit. Does that mean that we can save her? Preparing to slaughter the remnants of the Greeks of Sparta. She is Carthage. So we don't have to worry about... Oh, shit. We don't have to worry about her being slaughtered. It's just whether or not they pick her up and take her away. Whether they rescue her. Get down here fast. She's right there. Shit. Run! They're patching their people up. If we're fast, it won't make a difference because she's in amongst it all. Who else was there? I should have checked the bloody notifications if there's anyone else we can rescue. The father of Hippocrates is there. Okay. Eagle is the sister of Slave 7. And then the ex-wife of Baldor Hammer. Wowee, is there other people too? The aunt of Lupus? The sister of Sigma Draconis? Holy crap. Let's see if we can fish through them, but we need to get down there first and try and drive off the survivors. Numa Pompilius is our top priority. Okay, we'll wait for more people to turn up. Let's try and hide behind this wall for the time being. I'm not sending Yandere Dev just in by herself. Come on, Remus. Hurry it up. She's right there. We're going to pop around the corner right here and see what we can do. There's still a lot of them there, so we have to be careful. We could still be in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, God, we got a psychic drone. Jandiros is broken. You cowards. You cowards. Greece of Carthage are collecting trophies and, and left contentedly. Are they not? No, they're picking her up, right? Where is she? Where is she? Numa, 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 Numa Pompilis is there. They are picking her up. Okay, okay. Everybody, attack you. Don't let them escape. Come on. Maybe go in for melee. They are going in for melee. Crossbows are still firing. Nice. Good hit. Good hit. Good hit. Holy crap. Who fired that shot then that hit them in the kidney? Lupus Gastrafetes. Oh, Lupus, you were getting promoted. Wait, but look, that was after they died. Oh my god, of course it would be yonder, eh, Dev? Incredible. 18 hours before the... Remus. Capture Numa Pompilius. This is... This is an insane... This is an insane day. I think I've ever seen anything like this in RimWorld before. <laughs> what a fucking story. Now, in terms of survivors, there are a lot. There are so many. I think we'll say anybody above the age of, say, 25, who isn't incredibly significant, will just immediately mark to be finished off. And out of all of that, there are only three I'm interested in. What about you? You are old as fuck. Okay, that was a little bit too close. So we've got Hippocrates of... Bazakion, and there was another one down here as well. They're being grabbed. I think somebody's already grabbed them. Ah, well, they had been grabbed. Thank you for that. You under a dev, come and capture this person. By that, I mean, uh, <laughs> Alcibiades. You can grab them instead. Turns out Yandere dev is broken down because of the high psychic drone. And there she is, Numa Pompilius. We weren't able to save Remus's brother, but we have saved what's left of his daughter. At this point, there. <laughs> Really is very little. Holy shit. We can give her a leg. That's not too difficult. Uh, oh, apparently it is too difficult. We have no wood. But look, after all this time, she never turned her back on the cult of Son Invictus. All we have to do is recruit her and we're back to normal. Now, before World War III happened there on our doorstep, I had everybody working on the winery and the production to try and ramp that up a little bit. So we've got four different brewery tables now we haven't quite filled up all the barrels so i didn't think it was necessary to build more and then i who did i put on brewing i think it was a couple of yeah we've got five people on brewing now including wrestling and remus so in theory wine production should be should be better than ever we might need more fermenting barrels though so out of that entire rave we've got hippocrates of Byzacion, female age 16 construction double passion no good combat skills pretty good at animals though then we've got of course numa pompilius returning 15 plants double passion in social Fantastic. And then an 11-year-old boy. Oh, happy birthday, Mindoros. And we get to work on converting those two. Uh, it sounds macabre, but I'm kind of hoping some of our older generation will die out because holy shit, they are getting on my nerves. <laughs> and now in a show of extreme warning, 
Slave Dude has decided to come in and beat the prisoner with a fish. I've decided to name Bizarro Jesus Grand Priest, and it works out pretty well, given that Bizarro Jesus is our second best social character. But they did also single-handedly create an alliance with Sparta, more or less. In a short period of time, they have really upped themselves as a central figure in Reem. Ah, you all smell that? That smells to me like, oh dear, an infection. Oh God. <laughs> no doctor, but that smells like an infection. Oh, it's one of the new prisoners. That's okay. I was about to say it smells like an alliance with Athens, but I guess I should probably go and deal with that, huh? So, uh, I renamed all the Heathcliffs. The only problem is Roman numerals don't fit within the name limit. So we've got this horrible hybrid of Heath XX8 and Heath Triple X, and it's it's not okay. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you want me to fight how many people to protect your mega sloth? I think I'm okay. Actually, which is a bit of a shame because that was potentially our alliance with Athens So I think we'll caravan out and I think we'll sell them some yaks We'll try and sell everybody yaks at this point because there's no way in hell we're gonna be able to feed Oh my god, they're eating ten times what we can grow <laughs> So the closest Athenian settlement is miles away, but if we head down through this one and then head down that way we could sell a few yaks on the way to Sparta. So of course I'm sending Bizarro Jesus along with a whole bunch of Heathcliff. Any that are worth over 200 roughly that are fully grown. I've also thrown in the weight versus value. So we can decide what is best for the caravan. I've been sleeping on these hoplons because they're actually really, really valuable comparatively. Way more valuable than wine. Like old destroyed shields are worth far more than anything we've been producing. Which is a bit of a kick in the teeth, I'll be honest. I'm hoping we can do one single trip out there. If we have to, just keep going in circles or go coast to coast. But once this is packed, I never want to come back. And at long last, we've arrived at our first place. This is just going to be a quick trade with Sparta. A very quick trade. Oh, for God's sake. Thanks, Sparta. You shouldn't have. No way! It finally happened! Rice, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to sound happy, I promise. <laughs> Finally! Look at that. Riceling is dead. At the age of 86, happy birthday, Riceling. Here's a heart attack. That's a bit of a pain in the ass because they were our head brewer, but hopefully after this journey, we won't need any more things brewed. Kind of a notice the freezer full of dead, rotten rats? Like, why, though? Why are we going to... Bury all the people. I suppose we could turn the, the, the ex-turkey pen into into some sort of grave. Oh, incredible timing on that one, Jam. Or maybe bad timing, depending on how you want to look at it. Free up one better. Now it's immediately filled. Lucius is an incredibly thematic name. Meanwhile, Bizarro Jesus has arrived at the Emporion of Athens, which I'm sure we all predicted. Now, the first thing I want to do is gift them the Thrombo Horn. Give them that first. What are we up to? 59. Okay, so this won't take too long to become full-on allies then. There we go. Nice work. So we're at plus 88. Again, gives us a little bit of a buffer just in case we aren't able to make enough bloody silver this time around. Wait, they haven't got any gold at all? Oh. All right, moving on. By gold, I mean silver, but you know, you know what I mean. Oh my god, the grapes. <laughs> I'm not really sure we need another grape harvest at this point. We might do better just making actual food, or we could turn it into the the new and improved Heathcliff pen, given that we do have a staggering amount of Heathcliffs at this point. Well, that's just about the worst thing that could have possibly happened. Bizarro Jesus has been ambushed by scarier and fetid man hunting cats. If we lose this caravan, I'm going to cry, and then probably uninstall RimWorld. Oh, it's two cats. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe not nearly as bad as I anticipated there. I'm sure these guys can handle themselves. Kick that cat. Yeah, nice work. No. Another one so soon. The Grand Untrad is connected with Nildraith Torn. Damn it. Nildraith was the one connected to the Grandland Tree. Last events in her life. She collapsed due to food poisoning and then had a heart attack. <laughs> Does this stew taste funny to you? Classic Neil Drake's been eating my nan's cooking again. The age of 101, though. Holy shit. I'm gonna force prioritize burying some of these people because we have just corpses strewn around the place now. Riceling has been in the dining room for the best part of a few days. Someone has apparently dug up Diophantus. Thank you, Yandere Dev. Goodbye, Neil Drake. Little Riceling and Diophantus too. Was Diophantus not buried in the Senate? Oh, there's a free... A sarcophagus now in the Senate? 
We could reserve that for Remus. I think that would be quite a good thing to do. Although Remus, I think, deserves his own tomb. Maybe we reserve that one for Elagabalus. And we, we will have to build Remus's own tomb. We don't have a choice. You know how, like, if you were a kid and there was another kid whose birthday was kind of close to yours, you'd have a joint birthday party? We do one of those, except it's a <laughs> except it's a fucking funeral. No moral guide present. Why? Remus is right there. Did Remus lose his jaw again? No. Uh, he's got no nose, but as far as I know, you don't need a funeral to do that. Although every funeral I've been to, the person leading it has had a nose. It's because Bizarro Jesus is Grand Priest and Bizarro Jesus just arrived at Athens, which is a little bit too far away to do a funeral from. It's still a 70% and we're going to have Remus doing the funeral anyway. Let's just do it. Just get it done. I think this is the first time the morbid music has been appropriate. There you go. Good final disposition. So that's one down. And then are we allowed to have one? We are allowed to have one immediately again. While well, everybody's here, why not? That's it, just climb into the empty graves. We didn't dig those as seats, but you might as well use them, seeing as no one else is right now. Sign mortar? Shut the fuck up, this is a funeral. What's wrong with you? And there you go, a good final disposition. Very nice, and those those stack, right? That's a plus 10. Good funeral times two, yeah, or plus, I thought it was plus five each. I have no idea what's going on. Athens have no money either. Maybe we should start trying to trade with the trade caravans rather than the cities. Maybe that's where all their money is tied up. Oh, I should have just done this. What a fool. Well, if we just hang around the cities, we'll almost certainly be able to sell all this stuff eventually then if we just try and stay near one of the big trading hubs. And there it is. Almost one solid month of trading away various crappy trinkets and we have bought home in all that time and effort. About 14,000 silver. And my god, I hope it's enough. We weren't able to sell the hoplons in the end, which is a bit of a shame. But I think we got rid of basically everything else. Sold all the yaks in my desperation to try and make enough gold. 7,000 on that one. And then you have about 8,000. Wow, that actually might be enough. So it was 16,000 with Sparta, right? And we have lost a little bit of wealth since then. Oh, but look at the button. Player pays 15,000 in tribute. We've only gone and done it. Athens has forged an alliance with the Reman Empire. That means that Reem, Athens, and Sparta have formed a little triumvirate. And that means fuck Carthage. I'm fairly sure that was the that was the Roman expression, right? They were like, and furthermore, fuck Carthage. Done. Athens has declared war on Carthage. Carthage declared war on Athens. Sparta declared war on Carthage. Carthage declared war on Sparta. Reem has declared war on Carthage, and finally Carthage has declared war on Reem. And none of this would have been possible without the power of fine, fine Reem and wine. <laughs> oh, look, Numa Pompilis is down to five resistance, almost got her back. I guess we'll start gearing up properly for war this time. Now, everybody has pretty good gear, but it could be better. We could make it all out of plastic, of course, but that wouldn't be feasible. But making it out of steel? Wouldn't be nearly so bad, and it would be much, much better than anything Carthage would be able to make. And that's the only way we're going to be able to match them, right? Using our technology, using the full breadth of everything we've got available to us, using our yak cavalry, our crossbow tactics. I think, really, that's going to be the only way we can ever beat them. So what we'll do then is we'll go, firstly, to uh, the Mediterranean Smithy, and I guess we'll say only make it out of steel from now on. And only the allowed ingredients. See, we have no helmets made from steel. We have a single Lorica Musculata made out of steel. Uh, we, we could factor in plastic. I don't think we'll ever get enough to be able to do that, though. And then eventually we'll do the same thing with the weapons as well. But to be honest, I think for the time being, we probably won't worry about it. I think we're also going to have to go a lot more industrial with things as well. I might expand up the workshop just by a couple of blocks, bring it parallel with this one. But that extra room will give us enough to put down a, another couple of smelters. With the extra smelters, we can make a shitload more steel. I might increase the priority of quarrying for the slaves as well. I'm saying fuck the grapes. We're not growing any more grapes. We're not even going to grow food for the yaks. We don't have as many yaks now, of course. But this much, much larger field should be enough for them. Or not, because apparently a shitload. We are making kibble. We're growing a lot of food, but we haven't got nearly as much to do as we had before. I could always stop them fermenting it. I guess we really just don't need it anymore at all, do we? I'm sorry, friendship ended with wine. We're, we're at war now. Awkward public execution. 
damn it. This is new Riemann policy, by the way. If a prisoner hits the age of 55, they just get executed. By the time we've recruited or enslaved them, they're going to be ready to retire and we don't pay retirement around here. Ah, there we go. Look at that. So now Bizarro Jesus is back. We can also start having conversion rituals again. So your resistance is nothing. Let's get you converted right away then. I think somebody said if you convert first and then have the ritual afterwards, it doesn't put the other one on cooldown. 62%. Bloody hell. And now we can have a conversion ritual as well. I've been lied to. I've been lied to by the comments. Oh, who would do that? There's a yak on the dining room table. Heathcliff 31. Get the fuck down from there. <laughs> He's breaking these chairs. Well, I mean, I mean, I feel like that's probably a question that will answer itself, given the whole yak on the table thing. Dig. Dig for Reem. We've already got a lot of iron. All we need now is just an abundance of coal. Ah! I never thought it would happen. The return of Remus' elder child, Numa Pompilius. And now they can have enlightening conversations about the relationship between helping the sick and helping the sick. Wow. And the sad part is, all of our colonists are so old that even after all this time, she's our fourth youngest colonist. <laughs> what an incredible day for Reem. We've got a bunch of new recruits. Reem's first child has turned back up. Numa Pompilius. We've made alliances with Athens, both properly, and a full-on military alliance. And, of course, Sparta as well. All we need now is just cotton, and that's it. We can make our armor. Ah, oh, shit. Sign Mortar. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, no. Our oldest colonist at the age of 94. You will get one of the highest honors in Reem. A yak procession all the way to the grave. Did they have yak hearses in Rome? <laughs> and much like sign mortar, our grapes are also rotting away. A relic of the past. Goodbye, grapes. And goodbye, sign mortar. Let's start bringing everybody over for the funeral. I like the extra layer of cruelty by making the oldest person now bury the previously oldest person. <laughs> Plus five mood. Wow, wait, we need more people to die. Are you fucking joking? <laughs> Didn't even make it back to the bedroom. Oh, Sigma Draconis. Well, happy birthday. Time for another funeral. I don't actually want everybody to die, if that's at all possible. God, this is such a good tradition. Having the now oldest person bury them is very, very high tier. Why are you people carrying wine? Well, I suppose it's a funeral after all. I will admit, I'm feeling a bit more optimistic for the next time we get into combat, having swapped all of these 99 and 100 year olds for a bunch of young people. It's definitely a lot more... It's a lot more reassuring. All of these yak riding babies really does bring a tear to your eye. Ah, oh, there we go. The house couldn't handle it. Oh, the house couldn't handle it because not enough people have died. <laughs> Hear me out here. I'm starting to think maybe it's a good plan to take the clothes off of the old people. Because Grover the house, granted he's 67, he's the oldest person. He's probably not going to die anytime soon. When he does die, he's taking with him centurion armor. And I'd rather this old fuck didn't die and taint some of our best stuff. Jan Deiros is pregnant. Jan Deiros, I think you've had enough as well. We don't want to fall into a trap of completely pivoting from retirement home to nursery. That That's going to be equally as bad. Granted, not as bad because they'll actually grow into good warriors, but they've got to actually survive that long, you know? Whose body... Who's dug up Nildre? Oh, there it is. Baldor Hammer and Elagabalus are both starting on steel helmets. I think that is genuinely the best thing we could build right now. I could always check the apparel tab before I order up, you know, 25 of them. <laughs> we'll go for sharp defense. Yeah, it absolutely is. So the Centurion's helmet we know is better than the Corinthian helmet. And the iron one is up there anyway. Yeah, I mean, that is the best. Oh, hang on. Let's not buy craftable, you moron. Same story. We can make steel gladiator's helmet, though. Ooh, I never considered how they'd stack up. That would look pretty imposing, but I feel like it wouldn't be very on brand turning up with a bunch of gladiator's helmets. But we'll take a look. So the gladiator's helmet at its base level. Oh, it needs steel. Oh, interesting. 90, 70, and 100. And then the Centurion's helmet, which I think is in this one, uh, is... Was it 90, 70, 100? That's 78, 39, 52. Why is that way better? Oh, shit. I mean, making making gladiator helmets for everybody would be impressive, but... Oh, it, it is way better. It's not stuffable. No, it is stuffable. But it just requires steel as well. So if you make it purely out of steel, I think it could be better. But that is, what, 120 steel per helmet? What are the Centurion helmets? Uh, 65. 
It's twice as much. We can make it for Remus. Oh, man. If we can make him one out of plastic, though, that'd be cool. Maybe make a couple for our elite characters. Alagabalus, uh, Bizarro Jesus at this point. Definitely Remus, Jandiros. We'll stick with what we've got for that. What about the armor? It is still... Yeah, the, the Roman armor there is going to be pretty much unbeatable. Am I wrong? Hang on. 78.39.52 for the Lorica Segmentata. And then the Roman variant is 74.37.49. This is better? Oh. Shit. I mean, it, it's cheaper too. The downside to that, I assume, is there's no social bonus. Yeah, there's no social bonus at all. And this one actually makes the move slightly slower as well. Shit, well, let's swap them out then. Boom. All in on steel for that then. I like that we're getting rid of the slightly less effective but way more stylish muscle armor in exchange for proper war armor, right? And that baby is sleeping in a pile of filth on the street. I feel like that restriction on where they can go works, <laughs> works really well. I guess it's because there isn't a bed this time around. Baby? There is, a, there is an actual bed for it too. Lucius baby, rear sign. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, am I going insane? Did I accidentally put down a square? No. The baby has lost its mind. What the hell is going on in the pool? <laughs> what isn't going on in the pool at this point? Yandere Dev, Bobka, Jandiros. Wowee. So then, we will leave it there for today. An incredible day for Reem. The first child of Reem is back. The old people are dead and buried, thank God. I mean, don't get me wrong, they were massively beneficial to the colony. But holy shit, they were getting in the way. And more importantly, we've got our alliances. So it's, it's all out war now. I have no idea what the implications of, of formally declaring war like that were. Maybe I shouldn't have done it yet until we have actually prepared the weapon and armor. But I think we'll be okay. We'll also get these people renamed. I think they've survived long enough at this point. A couple of episodes now where they, where they have earned themselves full on Riemann names. Ready to go out and die with tomorrow. Ah, warfare. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Again, very slow one just because we are boarding up alliances. But I have a feeling that was the... That was the build-up. That was the calm before the storm. And now everybody's going to die. Thank you to Smacky, Falcon Alara, Streamer, Holy Reapers, JTJTJT, Kazoos, Moira, It's Steven, Mad Mal, Sabat, Poised as Fuck, Joseph Stalin, The Cum Stallion, Altari, Dagon, Bond Dollar, K, and Kyle for their support. The executive producer tiers over at Patreon. Thank you as well to Maximus Basilius, Irish Batman, Edzuki, Shittle Dirt, Grumpy Furball, Icy the Great, Pikiune, Garnuba, Sink9, Pumbly, Zega, the Chaos King, Papa Sano, Akka, Heck, Bo, 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 Bo. See you all tomorrow. Did I accidentally mute my microphone for that? That would be a... That would be a pain in the ass. Well, I guess I better watch that back in a hurry. <laughs>